four years old. I've been an activist for 50 years. My first march was at the age of 13 in 1960 with the NAACP, a year before the president was born. <laughs> and I've been doing it ever since. I'm angry. I'm a first generation American. My parents were World War II Holocaust refugees. My mother was an illegal immigrant. She arrived at Ellis Island in the late 1930s without papers. She was allowed to stay. And she cleaned toilets just like any other immigrant when she first came here. And my parents taught me one thing. They taught me that there's nothing more precious than American freedom. That was our religion on the Upper West Side where I grew up. Let's fast forward to 1968. I was in college. I was doubly exempt from the draft because I was queer and a college student. And the student protests, the anti-war protests were going on. I wasn't involved in that because I had just discovered that I was living away from home. Never mind. Anyway, um, so, but then the students burned the American flag. And as a first generation American, that pushed my button. And I said to myself, because I was 20 years old and very idealistic, I said, it's time to pay my country back for my family's freedom. And I joined the Navy. And uh, when I did that, I was in the Navy and the Army. So uh, when I did that, my friends told me, they said, you can't do that. You're a little faggot. And I said, watch me. And I served for 10 years. So um, I, I went to Navy boot camp, and it was pretty brutal. Uh, they cut off all your hair, and they called, they called everybody a fag. And I decided that, that uh, if the straight boys could take that, I guess I could too. So, uh, and I went to boot camp with a bunch of southern straight boys. So I'm, you know, they didn't take to be called things, but they did. So, um, and then I was assigned to an aircraft carrier. Um, and at that time, homosexuals didn't exist in the military. Nobody thought about it. And prior to 1969, of course, everybody was in the closet all the time. And so it really wasn't that difficult to serve. And when they called, when they had a witch hunt for homosexuals, the officers called me in this admirer. You're the only one we can be sure of. <laughs> I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Anyway, I'm gonna run out of time. So uh, I left the Navy because I wanted, it was cramping my style. Uh, and I really, I wanted to be free again. And so then I went looking for work, of course, and I was 25 years old. It took me a while to figure out I had one, one saleable skill, which was military administration, which is what I did in the Navy. It was a very masculine job. Um, and, uh, and so I got a job with the Army Reserve, a dual status civilian military job, uh, administering reserve units. And so then I was back in uniform. I don't understand it either. And so served another six years, became a sergeant first class, very highly respected by superiors and subordinates. Was an interagency negotiator and liaison, uh, so on. And, uh, then it was 1978, gay rights were just outside the base gates, and I had a long-term companion. We were together 20 years. And uh, at this point, I didn't leave to be free. I left because I just felt really filthy to lead a double life and to have to lie and pretend to be something I wasn't. And because I had a great deal of respect, like I said, and in the supermarket, I didn't like looking over my shoulder shoulder to see who was seeing me with my lover. At the time I served, especially during Vietnam, 1968, if I had been discovered to be gay, I would have been killed. Uh, and if I wasn't killed, then I would be dishonorably discharged. And um, so I had to hide who I was. It's very different today. Young people serving in today's volunteer military in America have never been in the closet. They don't know how to be in the closet. They came out in junior high school. Uh, people they're serving with have no prejudice. They certainly wouldn't kill you. Um, and they're serving more or less openly within their units. Their peers know, their peers could care less. Doesn't mean anything. Um, and yet, 40 years after I served, it's still illegal to be gay in the military. 
uh, you can still get discharged. You get an honorable discharge. Your paperwork says due to homosexuality. Back in the late 60s, it said dishonorable discharge. You couldn't get a job anywhere with that. You were disgraced for life. Today, if you get an honorable discharge due to homosexuality, you can go to corporate America, the New York Police Department, LAPD, Chicago PD, and they're looking for you because they want to hire minorities. It's a very different thing. The military is shooting itself in the foot by discharging us. We have served our country, and I think the cane is coming. <laughs> <laughs>